you can find a good community at whatever level you're at. I've seen ones that range from very professional to ones that are like extremely community oriented and build great communities. I've seen one that literally just felt like a frat house. How do you find them? Our game dev classifieds. Another spot is R-I-N-A-T. So this is for volunteer. If you're more into visual novels, then this is also a good place. I'm a soft, Renai, and there's other groups as well, but these are ones that I find are really easy because people are posting all the time. So what you can do is you can start with new. You will start talking to people and find out that it is not a project you want to work on. And that's okay. You're not committing yourself by just talking with the person. So let's say that I was like, you know what? I'm very interested in this. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to get more information. Read the whole thing. Don't just skip over this. This is important. Hi, I'm a graphic generalist, everything, game artist and game designer, Unity technical advisor, Unity composer and audio engineer, online portfolio. So this is great. I'm really happy that they show the online portfolio because somebody saying that they're all these things doesn't mean that they are. It, it means that they say that they're all those things. Because somebody can be like, hey, I'm a producer on this project. And it might mean, hey, I've got one other person working with me on this project on page and I'm not that good at leadership. Basically, I researched the person. What did he do on all of these? Did he build out the environments? Because if so, this is extremely impressive. I don't know if he did all the modeling. I don't know if he... Uh, did all the texturing. When I see all of this without any description, I assume that he did everything, but I would like clarification. Seeing that, I'm like, yes, this person knows what they're doing. Okay, so game design. This one doesn't impress me as much, but it's also, it's one of the things. If there's one thing that you're not as impressed with, that's okay. What I really wanna see though, and what's bothering me is that I want to see links to these projects. This is where you start stalking people on their socials. Let's work for you, exactly meet what the game needs, which is really not much, and then go for level design, my part. Okay, so when he says, which is really not much, you have to determine that as a programmer. You cannot let other people tell you uh, what is or isn't much. Maybe it's not much for somebody else, but it's a lot for you. Or maybe it's not much, but then they keep asking for revisions, and then it is a lot. Whenever anybody's like, really not much, that doesn't that's not a red flag, but it's just something to be aware of. You might see things that are like positive triggers for you. You'll see negative triggers and positive triggers. I like this. He's trying to create quality. Video shows a downgraded version of the previous prototype with some bugs, like the shadow shader that doesn't work anymore, and so on. What he's already got here, I'm like, yeah, like, heck, if I was uh, if I was looking for volunteer projects and stuff like that, I would be interested in it. This video is, to me, the greatest credibility. Searching a program, no code, but sure coders, please, who has the same ambition, time, reliability, drive, professionalism, and perseverance, fun, and seriousness as I have to help us in the end to get this game done and ready for approval. So this is another thing where I'm like, okay, what does this look like to you? What does the same level of ambition look like? The same level of time and reliability? Because you just said that you spent uh, 24 hours, I don't know what that means. Like you're saying 24 hours, six, I'll bet that you slept and maybe you have a family and you spent time with them. I wanna know what that looks like to you. Does that mean that you're asking for somebody to give you four hours a day, five hours a day, one hour a day, two hours a week? Like, what does that mean? But here's the thing, if you have questions, that doesn't mean don't contact, that means contact. I'm actually surprised that for the first post that we looked at, we got a really good one to look at. Like, this is very impressive. First, I would make sure that I know his name. He says, please write to me at contact. So you do not wanna to post to him on Reddit. I'm very interested in learning more about the project. Well, I would say, I'm a computer engineer who's, and I can throw out my stuff. Could you provide more links to your past work? Now, I would say that this is a person who I'd be willing to get into contact with right away. There are certain cases where you might be like, I need more information before I even like have a call. I'd love to get on a call with you as well to see if we'd be a good fit to work together. Thanks. Now, I'm not gonna say like, hey, um, this is the masterful post, but this is the sort of thing that I would do. But you wanna put in the work that's most relevant. Like I wouldn't start talking about, oh, I was marketing director to neurotechnology. Company. He doesn't care. That's not relevant to him. He doesn't care that I'm a good, he doesn't care if I'm good at design. He doesn't care if I'm good at drawing. He doesn't care if I'm good at audio engineer. Maybe he will later, but right now he's looking for a computer engineer. Don't start listing all the other things. Maybe it's worth it if he's like, hey, and I'm also looking for this. And then you can be like, hey, I do this and I also do this. So I can help out with that later. That might be worth mentioning. I I'm actually amazed at the first post that we clicked on. It was somebody that's so professional and put together. Great job, Patrick. If you have questions, ask them. And then if you like them, try to get in a call. That will help you get to know them. And it is an interview. It's an interview when you're getting to know them. Now let's try another one. Need 3D modeler, very easy, low poly. So here's what I'd immediately say. You do not tell other people that their job is very easy. This is not this is not what you want to do. What is it? Well, it's a project that I'm in for a small tire defense. When I say small, it's very easy work, but it's time consuming. Alone, it's kind of boring. It's a free project, or if it sell, I'll give everything to the people who join. Well, my part of the share. This is not planned. All I want is to be free from the project and do it. No. Okay, I don't need to look at any more of this post. You have just told me that you are not worth working with because you don't want this project. Big red flag for joining teams if they do not want to work on the project that they're working on. This is horrendous. I can't believe they posted that. Run away, run away, run away. 
Like, a, yeah, this guy, worth getting in contact with. This person, no. How to connect with game devs. One of the basic things is join a team. That's one of the easiest things. I can also like think of specific communities that I'm connected with. I guess to speak a bit generally, I I've connected with some people by basically seeing what do they need, keeping an eye on them, or actually just following the person. Whenever they're like, hey, we have this community that we're connected with, I joined that community and I started to connect. One of them specifically that I joined now is like a, my core friend group came about because of a series of connections through that. You're gonna have an easier find time in community with smaller creators because um, smaller creators don't have as much community. I say, look for niches. So for you, it could be, hey, I really want to find people who are doing manga horror. That's not my thing. Maybe you're like, hey, I want to do that. Hey, I want to look for FPS puzzle developers. Hey, I want to look for people who are working on um, SNES roguelikes. But basically, you're trying to find people who are in a specific niche. It's way easier to connect with people if you are in the same niche. The more specific you are, probably the smaller the community is and the easier it is to connect with people in that community. Heck, you might even find a good Discord group or online forum where it's like, hey, these people are here. I'm just gonna like put this out there. The best way to find a community is to build one. The people who I know who have found great communities have built them. <laughs> It might seem like intimidating or like, oh my goodness, what are you talking about? This doesn't necessarily mean actually starting a new community, it could just mean starting an event in a community. What helped me really connect with the games industry, start building my own connections, I ended up starting a regular video chat every Saturday in a niche game dev group. It was called Game Dev Gym at the time. Other people started coming and I started to connect with people who had industry experience, who were closer to the heart than I was. And other people who were in charge of the community were like, this is cool, and they started to come in. And I built great friendships and connections with that, and I'm really grateful. I have my job, I think, primarily because I was in that community. Your, your goal, presumably, is to connect with other game developers. So make it about all of your stuff, not just your stuff. Don't expect that, like, man, I need 20 people that I'm really deeply connected with. That's probably not gonna happen. Maybe five people, uh, maybe four people. Like, I would say that um, other people that I've connected with through the regular video chat, like, um, some of them are around more often, I've connected with them more deeply. Not everybody's as available, and that's okay. Now let's talk about red flags and volunteer teams. There are red flags, there are not red flags, and then there are green flags. Here's a list of some big red flags. They haven't improved their quality in a year. The only training is from its internal team. Bullying is a red flag. So one of the green flags that I'd say is a solid community. That is important and it might not seem important, but if you have a community that's not connected around a game project, it's likely gonna die out. So something else that is a red flag, leaders are holding onto things they're not good at. Now I will say that there may be an opportunity for conversation. And actually this is what I should say is another red flag, is um, leaders aren't open to confront. I'll say um, even just confrontation. There is a confrontation that's just the confronter being a jerk, but there is a confrontation that is very beneficial and that's incredible and awesome and one of the most loving things that I think a human being can do for another. You need a leader who's confident. It doesn't mean that everything that comes up that they run with it, but but also they're open to being wrong. Um, some of the things that I think are not red flags, I'm just gonna say typos are not red flags. Having problems. The red flag is not being open about problems. If something terrible is going on at a company, ideally the confrontation starts inside of the company, not outside of the company. Ideally it's like, hey, uh, leadership, we need to do something about this. And then ideally you have leaders who are open to tough conversations and open to being wrong. Like you need those two things with that. Not being open with the right people about problems. Not learning from mistakes. Mistakes are not a red flag either, believe it or not. Um, it, as long as people are learning from mistakes, mistakes will happen. That's part of life. It's okay. Other people insisting it's valuable for me, that's a big red flag for me because you know, it, it's the same sort of like, do this for exposure. And usually the people who are saying that won't actually give you any exposure that will get you anywhere you want to go. If they did, then of course I would do it, but they probably won't. Mentioning benefits isn't a red flag or having benefits, but it's it, if it's sort of like this, you're not convinced, here's a benefit. Like, it's like, no, it should be a great team. It should be like something that works. And I guess that what this goes with is it with it for me is desperation is to me a great red flag in a team is if they seem desperate to get you. I'm like, if you, what you have really stands the test, you shouldn't have to be desperate to get me and you should be able to trust that you'll be able to get somebody else. Putting people into roles with too little experience. Like if a small indie team is starting up, nobody has enough experience. <laughs> You can put me into a world where I have a teensy bit little, too little experience and grow up into it. Like there's different levels of that, right? No camaraderie is a red flag. And I do want to say all these red flags, these are things that can be fixed and stuff. I don't want to say red flag is eternal, but these are red flags. So you can hear the bad music playing. You know that these are problems. No filter for quality or insufficient filter. If anything that's produced is good enough, that's a red flag. Not red flag, not having the best quality. 
Like, you might not always have the best quality. That's okay. It's a bunch of volunteers giving their time for this. If people aren't caring, that's another issue. No filter for quality. That's a huge red flag. I've seen that. Oh my word. I would say that no prior experience is not necessarily a red flag. Green flags, clear structure for communication and leadership. Like they have goals and they're meeting them. Clear goals are green flags. Like, hey, here's what we're gonna do by this time. That's a good thing. It's good to have those clear goals. A great green flag is volunteers who stick around. It doesn't mean that every volunteer sticks around, but I've seen multiple teams where you have the same people there throughout the duration of the project and the new people come on and they stay. And that's really good. Like that's a fantastic thing. If you see that people are staying and not just like the best friend of the leader of the project, but like new people are just sticking around, chatting in the community, then that's great. Green flag conversations about things other than the game but not only if it's um no conversations about the game that's a red flag when you've seemingly reached the peak and there's nowhere else to go this is when i leave one thing i needed to be better at and i want to get better at in my life in general is creating those opportunities talking with people being like i would love to do this and that's something i've gotten way better at but if it's like there's nowhere else to go when there's a ceiling between you and where you want to go maybe i'll say hard ceiling. and it's hard because it might seem like a hard ceiling, but you can talk your way through it. But um, if you're like, hey, I really want to move into this role and there's no opening for that, that's a red flag. And that doesn't actually mean that the team's bad necessarily. It might just mean that there's not an opening for you and you need to find another team. Here's an easy one, mean people. If you have mean people on a team, I don't care how productive they are. Don't join that community. You don't want that to become your future in development. Heck, even if they have a lot of connections and they're like a great way to connect with a certain game development community, here's the thing is that if they're mean people, like, I kind of hate having to say this, but like, they're not worth connecting with. I left a position because I realized that I was taking on some of the negative traits of my leader. Things that would haunt me for the rest of my career if I let them get into me. So take care of yourself. Remember that the people that you're around will influence you. Be in teams that you want to be in. Be in teams you want to be in, even during your worst times. Like at Defiance Game Studio, even if there was a time when we just went through a horrendous patch and it was like, like just imagining the worst case scenarios, I'd still want to be here. Love my boss, love my coworkers. I want to be here even during the worst times. It's an area that I'm really passionate and excited about because I want people to find good teams. We're probably going to have to try out multiple groups because here's the thing is that there's all sorts of things in different groups where you're going to see, hey, here is something that's good here, here's something that's bad here, here's something that they can improve in. You're going to see all sorts of problems in all different groups. And some of it is that you're going to have to figure out which problems you're okay with. If there's a group and they have like two of these red flags, it might still be a good group. There's certain ones that I think are untenable, like mean people and bullying. To me, that's like, no, that's just immediate no. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some interesting volunteer teams. I guess, um, I guess I'll jump into another topic. Like that's a pretty in-depth one that I could go on and on about for a long time, but let's jump into a different one.